Okay, um, my name is Randy Phillips. Uh, I own a 46 uh, 108-1. It's Niner 7015. And um, one year ago this week, I became a CFI. So, <laughs> not that it's done anything for me, but anyway, um, we'll we'll do the easy one first here. Uh, the the tech channel. Um, who has one of these? Pretty much everybody, right? Okay, you are officially a videographer. Uh, the, I've, I've been doing video work for a few years. 1982 is when I started. So coming up on 40 right now. Um, when I started, the cameras were this size, you know, and you had a big thing down here, and it had a motorcycle battery in it, basically, that that powered the whole thing, and you got 20 minutes worth of recording time on it, and the video resolution was standard definition, and that little phone in my pocket will shoot up to nine times better quality resolution, and the optics on the lenses are better than that big camera was, so you all are now officially IW videographers. Um, so, and, and two, you can edit right in the phone. You don't have to put it in, in other software. So when, when we talk about the tech channel, what we're talking about is, is the YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to YouTube, type in Stinson Tech Channel, and that will get you right to the page. And anybody that's got tips or tricks that have, have contributed to us, uh, you can see it on there and see uh, different ways to do things or different ideas about how you can, you can do your own um, owner maintenance and things like that. Um, here is my biggest pet peeve in the video world. Okay, take a look at this screen. Is it wider than it is tall? Yeah. Take a look at how your eyes work. It's wider than it is tall. That's how you shoot video, folks. Okay, so and it this will work. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. If you if you shoot it that way, I can make it work no matter what. But this is how video is supposed to be shot. Okay, so when you if you do some kind of a video for us on whatever subject matter you have, it's better to do it that way. You get better picture quality. You get better visuals out of the whole thing, and that allows us to then use that on the tech channel and make it better for everybody. Uh, getting the video to me, there's multiple ways to do that. Most of the time people try to email things like that and it's just too big. Email won't accept things that big. There are video delivery services, uh, larger files that you can use. If you've got any questions, you can get a hold of me online through the tech channel or um, flyboy4969 at Yahoo is me. You can always get me that way too, or just ask anybody that uh, uh, is on there, and they, you can usually find me. So, um, but the the tech channel has been a great uh, asset to us. I just had the uh, stats emailed to me last week. I I think I think last month we had like over a thousand minutes viewed uh, on the tech channel. So people are using it. And it's, it's a good, good resource for all of us, and it helps spread that information. You know, we're, we're living in a digital age, so why not use it? That's what it comes down to, I guess. So, uh, if, any questions on the tech channel? Randy, I'd like to also comment that it doesn't have to be super technical. It's, you know, how do you access this tube or whatever. Exactly. It is. Here, here's, a, here's a way that I figured out how to do it. it all those little tips are very helpful. Exactly. Yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to do stuff and see how things uh, operate and, uh, you know, all, all the intricacies of, of all that stuff. You can, you can, if you have a way of doing something better, show it off. Why not? So, okay. So now the other one, the Hercules propellers. Okay. So um, we all know what that is. That's the... Uh, the, uh, the aviation Bible. Well, my opinion is that there are as many interpretations of that as there are of that. There's a few hard and fast rules in both books, non-negotiable, but there are also 
everybody's got a little bit of different interpretation on, on different parts of, uh, of both of those books. So, um, there's my girlfriend. I call it my girlfriend because it's the only uh, pretty lady that my wife lets me go out and fool around with on the weekends. <laughs> um, so um, uh, this is uh, my, my 108-1. It uh, has a Hercules propeller on it, as you can see. Um, a few years ago, I went in uh, for an annual. There's what it looked like before the annual. I got the, uh, the call that we all dread. There's some uh, metal shavings in your oil. So it's going to be in an overhaul. Um, went, uh, went to get that done. Jack Stewart did the overhaul with me. He made me a, 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 an offer that he would do the overhaul if I'd do all the dirty work, all the cleaning parts and things like that. And uh, probably still some after effects in here from all the fumes from that. <laughs> but uh, um, went to do that, uh, got that all done, tore it all down, went through everything all those beautiful internal elements. And, and honestly, I'd never been in, inside of an engine like that myself. So this was a good learning experience for me if you get a chance to do something like that, uh, help out or be around when that's happening. That's uh, a great uh, way to learn a lot about your engine and stuff too. Um, it was all done, I started flying again. Everything was working great, flew about 15 hours. I started seeing a little bit of an oil mist up on my windshield at one point. Okay, well, something's going on here. So we went back and looked. We figured that was probably this little monster. That's a, uh, a prop seal. Um, if you have a chance to uh, deal with that, I'd suggest having somebody else deal with it because uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a bear to, to get on there. That little spring fits around the outside here and that's what holds that, that closed. You can also have them as, as a, a solid piece. You have to boil it and use grease and a whole bunch of other stuff and pull it over the hub. And it's kind of a pain either way. But uh, anyway, um, got that done. Started leaking again. Started getting a mist on the windshield again. Okay, well, maybe we didn't do something right. So we pulled it off, didn't own it. By the time we got to the fifth prop seal, there's something not right here. We got uh, checking into a few things. Talked to um, uh, Chris down at Airworks and he said, yeah, you probably got a bad crank there, something's going on. So we pulled the engine apart again, pulled it off, opened it up again. Got the crank out, sure enough, there was a crack in the crankshaft. So now I'm on the hunt for a new crank. We um, you know, pulled it back apart, uh, started looking for a new crank. I found a, um, uh, a disassembled engine down in Tennessee that was working when it came off the airplane. We had the log books for it and everything. Uh, got it for a really, really good price, so I went ahead and bought it. Uh, had the crank sent out and checked. It has also a very, very tiny crack in it. Turns out, after the fact, now later on we find out we could probably have had that ground out. It's such a tiny crack. But anyway, went searching. Uh, Susan said she did not have any uh, 150 cranks available at the time. Um, we, um, she said there, there should be some coming on the market soon. Well, that could mean now, it could mean six months or a year from now. She did have some 220 cranks available. So I made the decision to go ahead and change over to a 220 crank, which that changes it from a B3 engine to a B4 engine. Um, totally legal to use a 220 and a 150. The difference is that it has a six bolt hub instead of an eight bolt hub. So that means a new propeller. Um, with the, uh, the crack and everything, I, you know, it, it made me think about it a lot and I thought, well, I want a wood prop, which I, I like the look of wood props anyway. Um, but, um, so I started on the search for a wood propeller. With a B4 engine, Sensenek does not have a certified prop for that. They do have a metal prop, and it's right at uh, 5,900 bucks for a metal prop for that. Um, went ahead and, uh, but they, they said, yeah, we can make you one. It won't be legal, but we can make you one. Uh, the wood prop was gonna be around 4,000 bucks and it was gonna take three months to do. Uh, there at that time had been a lot of folks talking about Hercules 
and um, some guys out on the west coast, I believe, up in uh, Washington or Oregon, somewhere up there. Uh, several folks over there have them. Uh, several other people around the country, and they were reporting really good uh, success with them. They really liked them. Um, so I got a hold of uh, Hercules. They said, yeah, we can build you one, sure. Uh, it'll be 3000 bucks, and we'll have it to you in, um, in 30 days. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty good deal. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. We uh, talked to um, uh, the, um, the FISDO in Springfield, Illinois. They said, yeah, with, with the original, uh, and that's, that's some of the planes that they have uh, put props on there, by the way. They went ahead and started building it for me, sent me pictures along the way the whole time. Uh, the original TCDS uh, for the Stinsons say uh, any wooden propeller that meets the static requirements there. Um, the, um, uh, when, when the propeller got there, we, we put it on and, and we had no problem with that at all, got it going. Uh, there was uh, a lot of discussion online about since it's not a certified propeller is it legal to use back and forth back and forth both sides have valid points uh, this was this was the letter that finally came out of the FAA about that uh, if you can't read it I'll just do some quick reading here for you uh, short answer is no longer answer per the FAA aircraft certification office propeller is a critical component um, Often engineering and testing required, diameter and pitch are measurable, but how does one guarantee an ability to handle engine power, speed, and ultimate strength over time? Hercules propeller located in the UK appears to supply the experimental and light sport markets. They do not appear to hold any US or foreign approvals to manufacture props via PMA, TC, STC, etc. without production approvals or certi certificated products. Hercules cannot claim one of their custom propellers is manufactured using the same materials or following an aviation authority approved manufacturing process. So that settled the question right there is basically they're saying the FAA says no it's not uh, legal until it is certified. So we have uh, now I have a beautiful two by four on the front of my plane. <laughs> now we are uh, uh, pursuing certification via the UK uh, process. We looked into it. Um, in the U.S., you have to, what was, I believe it was 50 hours of flight time, 50 hours of ground run, uh, vibration testing, and the list goes on. Very expensive, very time consuming to get this done. The U.K., basically, they have to uh, submit their paperwork and show over there what they're doing and how they're doing it, how they're manufacturing it. Um, uh, w the amount of uh, moisture in the wood as it's as it's being uh, put together and everything and once that's done it will be certified there there's a reciprocal agreement between the US and the U UK that allows if it's certified there makes it tremendously easier to get certified here and we have uh, Terry Bowden Terry thank you Terry Bowden is working with us along along with us on that um, so anyway um, yeah, we, we are working right now. The club is um, behind this, um, trying to get this certified along with, um, with uh, Rupert, uh, who is the uh, owner of uh, Hercules. He, um, I actually spoke with him here three weeks ago, maybe something like that, and you know, get up at 4 a.m. to make a phone call to the UK because that's time difference and everything. But, uh, uh, they have, currently they have um, uh, submitted all the paperwork. It is, it has gone through the processes over there. They uh, have returned the paperwork, said, okay, we need to change this, this, and this, that sort of thing. Uh, but it is in the process of being certified. Uh, he has now hired a full-time person, a gentleman who's retired, who has dealt with certifications all of his life over there. And they've hired him as a full-time employee to pursue certifications for these propellers uh, both there and here in the US so uh, his last comment to me was it's moving but it's moving at a glacial speed which seems to be the way things go with uh, this sort of thing so um, but it is it is uh, on the way hopefully it's gonna be done you know be fine with me if it happened tomorrow 
Uh, I don't imagine that's going to happen. But um, we, um, uh, we have another avenue here for propellers for our planes that, uh, you know, with, with the crankshaft situations that we seem to have, uh, this might be a, a very viable, very useful uh, uh, product for us to have uh, you know, under our belts. And it seems to be um, something that, that Hercules wants to pursue. They realize that there might be a good market for them to expand their business as well. So, questions? Yes, sir. Assuming Hercules is able to get the European certification or UK certification, do you know what the process is to take advantage of that reciprocal? Uh, Terry does. And uh, he's, he's, he, he specializes in antique uh, certifications. Er, he's, a, he's a DER, a Designated Engineering Representative. He um, specializes in antique stuff and has worked with Susan quite a bit uh, on, and on multiple projects in the past. Uh, he's very well versed in that stuff. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll defer to him and let him <laughs> deal with all that stuff. But uh, it's, uh, once, once it happens there, Apparently, that reciprocal agreement makes it significantly easier to get it done here. So, do yes, they, sir. Do they make those cranks? I mean, uh, to match the, uh, to the drill the props to match the crank? Yes. Or you can do a 65 or 165. Yeah, you can do you can, anything you want. We basically, what we did was um, that, uh, and I'll, I'm sure I'll mess this up, there's um, a standard bolt pattern. For I think a continental, and that bolt pattern is exactly the same as what this crank is. Okay, okay, and uh, we literally, you know, took a took a piece of cardboard and pushed it into that crank, made impressions in the cardboard, and made sure it was in there really good. I put that in a FedEx envelope and FedExed it to the to the UK to Hercules. And they looked at it and said, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do this, no problem. Came back and it, it's perfect. Randy, is the Hercules is all wood? Uh, yeah, they, they, they do wood propellers. They uh, also do um, um, on the surface. That, well, if you look at the, uh, the pits there, you can see it's all black. Well, they, they do like a, a covering of some sort. And it's, they call it herculethane, I think is what they call it. But basically, it, you know, it's a, it's a urethane covering. Um, and the leading edge, they also would, I'll call it herculethane on there as well. So if you do get into light rain, it's, you, know, you, you don't want to fly a wood prop in, in heavy rain because it's going to just destroy it, basically. It's so much uh, impact force on it. But that, uh, they, they can do the, the, the brass or nickel leading edge, and they also do, like I said, what they call herculethane, which is uh, their own design of whatever it is. But uh, for the leading edges, but yeah, they basically they're all wood props. So when they do the leading edge of brass or nickel, is it real brass or nickel? Or is yes. It simulated. Okay. As far as I know. How's the performance compared to other propellers? Uh, I have a seventy-six fifty. Um, the only thing I notice is um, it's a it's a little slower getting up to speed. Once I'm up to speed, I'm running the same as, as I did with my, my metal prop. I got a question, uh, maybe more here towards Greg. Is there any, I know Mike was making props at one time. Falcon, yeah, Falcon's still a certified prop. Falcon thinks it's the only thing right now in the United States bill. Okay. He makes it to 150s, but he hasn't got no 65s on there. Okay. So that's an option for the group that they'd like to get a 150 prop made. Yeah. Okay. And there is a Macaulay prop that fit that uh, B4. I have a I have a 175 SFC 8040 on my airplane. Man, I don't know those numbers. See, <laughs> <laughs> see my prop from a Cessna 170 basically uh, fit on it, and, and I got good performance on mine. And you know with that flat pitch, and of course yeah. it's a great climb prop, but I can still get. Uh, Was your metal from the crank? I'm sorry. I know this is a prop question, but 
When did he get twenty pounds of that? Oh, oh, uh, we. As far as we can tell, it was the front lobe of the of the camshaft. My um, um, oil pump was not pumping enough. Apparently, it wasn't getting up there as often as it should, uh, and or when it was sitting on the ground, you know, it would just drain away from it. And on well, startup, maybe that's what it was. But we don't know exactly for sure what happened. But we think that's what it was. What was your indicated oil pressure at that time? Thirty-five, thirty. Some somewhere in that range, yeah. You're asking me to remember things three years ago. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Ta-da.